Okay, uh, we're ready to explain what we're doing here. I'm Don McLaren. This is my client, Bill Anderson. And together we've written a book, a very important book. It's called Seeking Heaven's Gate in L.A. Now, uh, as you can see, the top here is a picture of Hollywood. And then under here is a picture of actually Bill walking down an alleyway, uh, which he took on his way to school uh, to sort of get to school safely without having to be attacked or uh, uh, you know, robbed by gangs at the time. So this is part of the story is about the gangs and where Bill lived, which was in South Central Los Angeles. And we all know Hollywood and California, Los Angeles, but what we may say is that there's an underside, an underbelly to the whole living at this time with the gangs taking place. So there's an important element here. And um, I believe uh, it can be said that Bill had a tremendous family. It was a Christian family. And uh, his father was a teacher one time. And then he went on to work for the post office in Los Angeles. But uh, one thing significant is that um, uh, Bill's father uh, actually stayed uh, part of the family, which is a very good uh, uh, thing for the family and for a black family because many times, unfortunately, we hear how black men uh, have children and then they disappear, uh, the men go off somewhere. But uh, Bill's father was an outstanding example and also he was uh, able to participate in the church and he had his children, including Bill, uh, go to church every Sunday. So this was a good uh, influence on Bill. However, as the book explains, uh, there's a dilemma here. There's a conflict. Bill is spending a Sunday in church, but then he's got Monday to Friday where he has to deal with the, with the gangs. And is he going to participate? Is he going to get involved? as a gang member or so. This is really his personal dilemma and how, uh, how he goes about uh, trying to solve uh, what he's going to do there in South Central LA. Now, Bill, maybe you could explain some of the gang situation uh, and the type of gangs. I believe it was the Crips is the primary gang in, in your neighborhood, is that correct? Yes, uh, it seemed like it was the Crips. So the Crips start, they just popped out of nowhere like my fifth grade year in school, mm -hmm. uh, uh, after a while you start seeing Crips on, written on the alleys and on mm -hmm. storefronts and you hear people talking about Crips, mm -hmm. you know, Crips are there, Crips are here, be aware of them Crips, until uh, from the fifth grade to sixth grade in elementary school, you're reading, well, there was no problem with nothing like that, but the stuff hit the fan once they hit the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. and so what school was everywhere. that in? Yeah, what school did you go to there? I went to Horseman Junior High School, mm -hmm. and that school was infested with Crips. Yeah, and uh, Crips were a little bit notorious even by then because uh, a couple of things. One is they would sometimes sneak into classrooms or so just to hide away in the back of the classroom with certain teachers, is that correct? Yes, yes they would sneak in the back in the classrooms in the back uh -huh. to blend in with other students during a sweep. A sweep, a sweep of, is uh, when yeah, okay. the administrators are, are looking for truants, they're looking for people that are not supposed to be on the school campus and people they know that's troublemakers. Right. And they do a sweep and they run into different classrooms or even run out to school. Mm -hmm. But they are hiding in certain classrooms where they know they can get away with it. Yeah. And not only that, they in some classes, unfortunately for the teacher, they would be even in the back there gambling or smoking or weed or something. Gambling and smoking and sometimes weed. It depends on where exactly where the class is at. Mm -hmm. If it's like on the back where next to a street, mm -hmm. you more likely to smoke weed. Mm -hmm. Something there. But they, they, they be careful about that too, because they know they, they don't want to get caught. So they try to do, mm -hmm. be as smart as they can be, believe it or not. Yeah, right. Which is pretty good. Though. They do yeah. a lot of clever things, believe mm -hmm. it or not. Unfortunately, the young men involved with the gangs were smart, clever, 
but not for school or for text books and other things that they needed for real life. Um, this is a tragedy in, in their own career. But uh, you also said, um, they, you know, besides this in the classroom problems, they also were problems uh, becoming thieves, I guess, to uh, other students at lunchtime. Yes, yeah. lunchtime was a primary time where they know they can get money from people, mm -hmm. from students. Mm -hmm. Especially if there's a long line and they just come up to you and say, give me, give me some money, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. They know you had money because there's no way you'd be yeah. in line yeah, right. uh, uh, mm -hmm. without money. Right. So, mm -hmm. that was a scary part of uh, going a horseman was going into line, especially, you know, if you have a free lunch ticket. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, some, uh, so every day, I guess, there was always a threat of trying to go to school? Is that what you're saying? Every day, every day there was a threat. And I don't believe that I went to school every day in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. But I went to school there, I went to horseman every day. Mm -hmm. I went to class every day. I couldn't stay at home. Yeah. My father was strict. And, yes, um, right. Yeah. Only way he had to stay home, he had to be close to dying. Yeah, right. For you to, not to go home yeah. and stay home. Stay home, right. Well, that's uh, one thing good about his father. He's a good family. Um, training and example all the more so hopefully uh, all fathers will be good and also good examples and um, treat and guide their children the right way because it certainly um, shows you that probably those uh, Crips were joining Crips because maybe they had no fathers or other problems at home is that Correct. Right. Correct. From what I see, uh -huh. they mainly joined the Crips because maybe they, didn't have, they probably didn't have a father at home, or if they did have a father at home, he wasn't as strong as he should be towards them, mm -hmm. or maybe he was an ex-prisoner or something like that. Yeah. So, or maybe doing illegal things himself. Mm -hmm. so, so yes, there it was. was uh, it's a tough situation. Home life uh, problems that it's sort of destroying not only the, the immediate family but. Uh, the education of, of the kids. I mean, we say kids, but they were teenagers. And um, the whole problem is still uh, going on. I mean, uh, I just want to re reference here what situation in particular it happens to be New York City, not Los Angeles, but it happens. Uh, here's a situation where a young man, and it's noted that he's a member of the Crips and he started shooting to try to shoot the father but his aim was not too good so we, unfortunately he shot the the stroller that had the father's son in it and the uh, child did get shot and killed and uh, then there was a big uproar and they have managed to capture this man who ran off to another state to try to get away but he, here's a young man who's technically ruined his life and other lives and he ended an, a young child's life and maybe this child could have grown up to be somebody important or helpful to other people. Maybe he could have been a medical doctor and the world has lost uh, this opportunity. We know that there's actually hundreds of shootings going on every year throughout the United States and there may even be hundreds of shootings in, in uh, New York City. But uh, the fact is the mentality of the Crips, as he's boasting here, he's a member of the Crips. We don't need to see that. And actually, Bill's book reminds us of uh, another case, how the book ends, that tragedy did strike, and shootings do take place. And uh, we hope to get the message to other young people, let's avoid the Crips, and uh, let's find ways to educate uh, everyone so they have a better opportunity. This is no way. This young man may spend the rest of his life in jail. And in some cases, uh, some people in some states may be put to death for having killed somebody. So it's a very serious situation to be a member of, a, of the Crips or the Bloods. And uh, the Bloods and Crips were the two main uh, gangs that you were telling, yes. was it? Matter yeah. of fact, this story kind yeah. of reminded me of myself as a kid. Mm -hmm. I remember me and my family, we took a family out into one of the parks. Mm -hmm. uh, Cincinnati Park, to be in fact. In, in Inglewood, California. Yeah. yeah, Los Angeles. That's the main turf for the Inglewood family, which is now associated with the Bloods. Mm 
-hmm. And we was there, I remember it was on my, I was there playing with my brother mm -hmm. in the park, you know, like any other normal family would do. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, there was a, a big ruckus going on. Turn, it turns out it was a Inglewood family driving the Crips that was in their park, out of their park. Mm -hmm. This was the early stages of the gangs mm -hmm. in L.A., mm -hmm. the Crips and the Bloods, or Inglewood family. And thank God there was no shooting going on. They wasn't shooting at the time. Mm -hmm. But they could have been shooting. Well, all they did was like a little fist fight. Mm -hmm. They threw trash cans at each other. And the Crips, they ran out the park. Yeah. But, but, but later on, yeah, it's they the started guns. shooting guns. Yeah, yeah. And guns. And we was right in between them. We was yeah. playing. If there was a shooting, yeah. we more, I could have been shot. Yeah. And I was about a little... Oh, I say about five years older than this kid right yeah, here. Yeah, right, right. So uh, we're going to get the message out with Bill's book, and Bill can be a speaker, or maybe myself. And uh, we want to reach schools, or kids, or churches, and anywhere where uh, we can influence, uh, especially the young kids and uh, young teenagers, young adults, to say, hey, let's do something, make changes, help people get education help people get jobs, help them have reasons to stay off the street. And uh, I thank Bill very much for uh, working hard on his book. And now we have a finished book of over 300 pages, but it's a, it's a great story. And uh, it's just an example that we feel we can help save lives. So we're going to be keeping in touch with anybody who wants to uh, email us or call us or mail us. And we'd be glad to help help you, your your school, your church, whoever, and uh, your young people. So we're going to do that. And in the meantime, I'm just going to turn this off. But we're going to relate to you by YouTube and other ways too. We have a website coming up. Okay. Thank you for being participating with us very much. And we'll be in touch.